Okay, so in this section of the video, I'm going to be showing how to curve fit for uh, permeability from porosity. I'm going to be showing how to curve fit rho perm and how to curve fit capillary pressure. So in the data sheet that we have, there's a table that has thickness and porosity. We're going to use the porosity values in this table to determine the permeability in our reservoir grid box. First of all, I'm going to go to the tab that has that's, type, that's titled porosity perm relationship. Basically, this is this was gotten from core samples, and we're going to use this to determine the relationship between porosity and perm. So that using that relationship, we can get the perm in our reservoir from the porosity values we are given. So I'm going to start by going back to the Word document. Uh, it says perm is related to porosity by the cosine carmen relationship, which is K is proportional to porosity cubed over 1 minus porosity squared. So I'm going to go back to the Excel worksheet. And now I'm going to make a plot of permeability on the y-axis versus porosity cubed over 1 minus porosity squared on the x-axis. And I have already done that. And this is what I had. So basically, this is a column of porosity cubed over 1 minus porosity squared. And then I made a plot of this on the x-axis versus perm on the y-axis. And then since the relationship between perm and porosity given by the Carmen, because any relationship doesn't have um, a constant added, that is no um, no y intercept i set i set my plot to have no y intercept so um if i go to trend line if i take on my trend line you're going to see that it says set intercept to 0 the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to display the equation on my chart. And then I'm going to take note of what the slope of the line is. Basically, the slope of the line is going to be the constant of proportionality for the cousin Carmen relationship. And using the constant of proportionality, I can now go to my porosity uh, tab and impute the equation because now we have the constant of proportionality which is 26134, 26134, which is what we had from the slope of our line. Next, I'm going to be showing how to curve fit for rel perm. If you go to the tab that says rel perm, you see that we're given um, water or rel perm information and gas or rel perm information, as well as capillary pressure. The first thing, the first thing to do is to get rid of um, all the values that are repeated. So for example, I'm going to get rid of all the zeros after the first zero. This is just to help uh, make it easier to determine the endpoint. So if you go to the bottom, you can take out all the 0.7s after the first 0 0.7. Do the same for every column, basically. And when you're done with that, you're going to be left with 
You're gonna be left with something like this. The next thing I'm gonna the next thing I did was I made a plot of water saturation on the x-axis versus KRW and KROW on the y-axis. So that's this first plot. And then by comparing this plot to the plot given in the Word document, so that is this plot. I was able to determine the row perm endpoints. So if I paste that just by the side, control V, and I enlarge it, if I ignore the capillary pressure line, I can compare my plot to this plot and determine what my cone water saturation is, what my critical water saturation is, what my KRO cone water is, ETC. And then after determining the endpoints, I enter those values on the table that I created. So my cone water saturation was 0 0.2. Critical water saturation was 0 0.3, and so on and so forth, up to my KROG Acone gas. Now, in the next couple of lines, we have our exponents, which are going to be determined using solver. So what I did is I made a um, separate column for dimensionless saturation, SWD, because um, if you look at the Word document, it's the formula for care W. The formula for care W is care. is care w i r o times s w d times i mean raised to the power of n w and s w d is defined by this equation so so basically i use the equation for s w d to generate this column and then I use the formula for care W to generate this column. And if you go back to the equation for care W, you're going to see that the only unknown, the only unknown right now is NW, which is our exponent for calculating care W. So back on the Excel spreadsheet, I have a different column called error. So in this column, I basically subtracted my calculated care W from my, from the values of care W that we were given. And then I squared, I squared that difference. And then I took a sum of all the errors. I took a sum of all the errors, which gave me this value. So and then using using solver, I was able to vary. I was able to vary uh, my N W, which is this value, varying this varying N W, which is this value, varied my K R W because K R W depends on N W, and then by varying K R W, I was able to uh, min I was able to minimize my error. And I found that the NW that minimized my error was 3.128056.
that was what Solver got. And then I did the same for care O. I did the same for care O W, K R G and K R O G. And these were the exponents that I got from Solver after minimizing the errors. Yeah, so that's how you curve fit for rel prime. And then these are the, these are the values that we're gonna impute into CMG for CMG to use to define our rel prime. Next, I curve fit for capillary pressure. So the main problem, or the main reason why I couldn't just copy and paste the capillary pressure that we're already giving into CMG is because um, when we put in when we put in the exponents and endpoints that we just determined in the previous section into CMG, CMG is going to make a table which is going to have saturation varying differently from the way we have from the way our table is varying saturation. So basically, CMG is going to have a is going to have different saturation intervals than from what we have. So for our capillary pressure to still match the saturations that CMG is going to produce, we need to determine a relationship between saturation and capillary pressure. Um, in the project document. Um, it suggested that we use the Brooks and Corey relationship, which is defined by these equations. So if you go back to Excel, you can, if you go back to Excel, you can make a table of capillary pressure using the formula in the Word document. So basically, this formula even this uh, and in this formula the only unknown is the only unknown is um, the Brooks and Corey coefficient gamma underscore OW so that's what we're going to use solver to solve for so going back to the Excel document and after entering the equation from the Word document, you get the error, and then you get a sum of errors. And then by changing, by changing, by changing this coefficient, I was able to change um, the values of PCWO, which in turn was able to reduce our error. And then after using solver, the value of our Brooks and Corey coefficient that minimized our error was 0 0.811764. And then I did the same for gas or capillary pressure. So basically, when CMG gives us saturation values for our relevant table, I'm going to use these coefficients to determine the actual rel prime at those saturations. 